like motor GP speed. Doing a wheelie at 140 mile an hour. First second, third song. That is so fast, isn't it? Um, so the single sided swing arms for the Super Booster. Uh, we're well underway. We're, it's the last thing we have to make for the number one bike. And once it's powder coated and assembled, then the whole bike will be assembled and it'll be out to our customer. This is the swing arm that we're building. So this started off as a H2 Kawasaki swing arm. But you can see how much work we've put into this. This is all gusted, reinforced. None of this exists on the, uh, on the H2. We've manufactured, copied what's required to get it to fit in the right place on a higher booster. And so all that's welded in now and supported. And then the last piece is the pivot for the trailing arms on the suspension. So we've just machined that. That's going to go in there. And that's going to be welded. Once it's welded, we'll put the bearings in, put the spacers in. Um, no, we won't. We'll get it powder coated and then we'll put the spacers in. So that'd be nice to get that done. We've got three more to do. So they'll be underway tomorrow because this one's now done. So we'll just get the other two underway. Uh, so making a bit more progress there. Um, what else have we got? My Rocket 3, which hasn't been touched for maybe a year. Um, I had webcams grind, uh, grind me, hard weld and re-grind me some Triumph Rocket 3 cams with three millimeter or thereabouts more lift and more duration. because. Let's face it, the standard cams in a Rocket 3 are really cooking cams. They're, you know, two and a half litres to make 150, 280 brake. The engine's not trying. It's not breathing. And my thoughts were, OK, we'll put the supercharger on it. And it'll probably make some pretty reasonable horsepower. But it's the cams that are going to be limiting the power. So I sent some cams off to Webb. They got tripped up with COVID and they just didn't turn up for months and months and months. Eventually they turned up, then they sat on my shelf because we were just doing well with the basic regrinds to, to get the Rocket 3 um, with the supercharger performing well. So we had them, had the standard cams reground in this country, but that only gave them another 0.6 of a mil more lift and about another 20 degrees more duration. But it worked well, you know, to get 300 plus horsepower with the rocket was really terrific. But as my dad used to say, you'll not be happy until you break it. So we're going to put these really wild cams in my Rocket 3 and put the supercharger on it and probably some water methanol injection and maybe spin the supercharger a bit faster. See how much power we can get out of it. No doubt I'll break it, but, you know, maybe 450 to 500 horsepower would be pretty fucking awesome, wouldn't it? Uh, just because we can. I'll never market it because I feel that it would just kill all the transmission, the clutch, the drivetrain, um, unless somebody's got a bottomless pit. But I just want to do it. I just want to do it. So this is what we're doing. So we've got the cams in. These are the cams. Look at these babies. Somewhat pointed. So these are running 12 millimeter lift where the stock cams are running less than nine millimeter. As you see, if you look right down here, we've had to do some clearancing because the cam loads have just been catching the casting. Most of that is already there. We haven't cut all this out. We've only whittled out like about half a millimeter you know about 20 thou out the bottom of that just to clear the cam lobes so the cams are in uh we've got the degree disc on the end of the crank and we've got the dial gauge on it and we're going to dial the cams in in situ uh like we did the cams on uh, on the, all the rockets that uh, we put the supercharger on 
So this is going to be interesting. We're going to put a big bore exhaust on it. Um, still keep our standard uh, supercharger conversion because it's such a lovely bit of kit. Um, but like I say, probably spin the supercharger a little bit faster. Um, see how much power we can make. We'll probably have to increase the uh, strength of the clutch as well. Um, but we're getting there. We're getting there. It's, it's just nice to do something exciting. Exciting. Work has been so draining with uh, dynos being down for three weeks, not getting any dyno work done, and it just backing up on me. And I fixed the dyno last night. So with all the people that have come to help me and try and fix it and try and understand what's going on, I fixed it. So <coughs> we've now got Ross's uh, Harley on the dyno. Been trying to get it on the dyno, like I say, for a little while. Um, we've got three Harleys that are all in, imminently going to come out and go out the door. So... This is Ross's bike. Look at that. That's a work of art. We've had to change the position of that to clear his exhaust system. So we made a new back plate with the opening for the throttle body further down so we could lift the whole thing up. And then we had to change the pipe work. We had to move that further up to meet this. So this is all nice gloss black powder coated. So this is our new soft tail kit. This is the first bike with the soft tail kit on. Uh, with the counterclockwise rotating supercharger. Um, I've just been doing a smoke test to see if I've got any leaks on the system. So, look at that. That makes the smoke. A bit of heat and some baby oil. It smells rather nice in here. So, we push a bit of air pressure and smoke going into the supercharger. And it goes around all the pipe work, through the plenum, through the intercooler. And if there is any air leaks anywhere, we'll see the smoke come out. And it's a really useful thing to do because it can save a lot of time, abortive time, if you've got something that's not quite right. So that all proved good. Uh, we've run it on the dyno today. And I'm working just with my laptops So I say we've had lots of problems with uh, with computers and communication. So I'm running. Uh, where are you, Davy? Throwing uh, Dynajet Power Vision, and I've just been working some things out. There's all sorts of things on here. Uh, this is torque-based ETC table, which I've just been messing with. Uh, but there's you know lots of tables. 12.2 to one is where we like the air fuel ratio to be. And on this one, with a bit of luck, there you go. That was the last dyno pull. So we've got something going on at the top end. I think she's pulling a lot of timing at the top end. It's not throttle closing. Uh, this is what I wanted to get on top of this afternoon. Uh, but we're making 198.88 horsepower and 199 foot-pound of torque on that particular run. Um, we've actually made a little bit more than that on earlier runs. So, almost finished. Got a bit of fine-tuning at the bottom end to do. And give Ross this back on Saturday with a bit of luck. We've got Billy's going on next, and we'll get his problem sorted out. I know what his problem is, but I couldn't put it on the dyno because I didn't have one. So, that's going on the dyno, and we'll get Billy's out the door. So that's great. Aerial Atom, beautiful supercharger job on the Aerial Atom. The guy went out, he did six or seven uh, sessions on his track day, and then he went off song. So, he decided to put it on the trailer. When he put it on, started putting it on the trailer, it started running perfectly fine again. So, he brought it to me and he said, can I fix what's wrong? But I can't find anything wrong. It's running perfect. It's been on the dyno. I've run it up. I can't run it on the road because it's on slicks. So we're not, you know, it's not a road car. It's a track car. 
and it's all running perfectly. He's still making the same horsepower, but for some reason it went sick on him, and then it came good. So maybe a dodgy map sensor. I don't know. Maybe that's the only thing I can think of is maybe a dodgy map sensor. But you know, it's not dodgy at the minute. It's still working. Um, the only thing I'm thinking of now is that I'll go with him on a track day with my laptop, a uh, few spares, and we'll see if we make it misbehave. If it doesn't, if it misbehaves, we'll find out what's wrong. If it doesn't misbehave, then what do we do? <laughs> you wait till he does it. <laughs> Just crackers, really. Uh, but that occupies your time, and you can do without it. But you've got to look after your customers. Hey ho, onward and upward.